Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Foreman Garage. Today we're working with War Car Auto Group and today we're looking at this 22 Kia Sorento. It's got a little over 5,000 miles on it and it was set to be a CPO, it's a certified pre-owned vehicle, but it um, it's not gonna pass for a certified pre-owned, which is a shame because it looks fine, but the vehicle's been wrecked on the front and it has uh, some issues with the front safety um, radar system. And uh, I'll show you the, the codes and everything that it's doing. Um, so let's check it out. <laughs> oh no. Here's what she looks like. Actually does not look bad at all. Looks like it is in really good condition. All the way around. Unfortunately, not good enough for certified pre-owned. Just because it's been wrecked on the front here. And I'll pop this hood and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, this is what it's doing. It's just sitting here with it running. And it's um, just freaking out. Um, the forward brake assist um, safety system and all that and everything. Um, so, um, we're going to have to check it out and See, he's probably got a bad wiring harness or something, bad ground. Um, it's got a uh, loss of communication uh, with the control area network. So um, <laughs> let me turn this thing off. <laughs> so we're gonna have to pull the front bumper and uh, I'll do that and we'll check the wiring harness and the front radar uh, and see if uh, the front radar is bent back. Um, it's been uh, repaired, but apparently not prepared properly uh, so let's check it out so uh, this uh, before we pull that front bumper and everything I just wanted to show you the codes that it had so it's got these codes right here um, basically all three of them um, for um, the uh, local can timeout uh, can timeout uh, can timeout I mean it's a front uh, camera, uh, front radar, rear radar, and the uh, track to control system. And of course this shows in history, but um, because I have the vehicle turned off, so as soon as I uh, start it up, they'll go active and then you turn it off and uh, they go uh, and then just turn the key back on and it'll go back into uh, history. Um, and uh, that it's showing the front radar, rear radar, and uh, the thing is, the it, it all ties into the same control area network. That's what CAN stands for, C-A-N, control area network, timeout. It's not getting any communication, and so um, I suspect that there's probably a wiring harness issue because it has been wrecked on the front. And uh, I'll pop the hood and I'll show you how I can tell that um, uh, somebody has been in there, you know, we need to go to where the humans have been and uh, check it out and see, you know, what they've done and what they missed. Uh, so uh, let me pop the hood. Let's check it out. Okay, let's look at this. So the first thing that I noticed uh, looking at this, just uh, the hood open and everything is we have no markings on the hood here we don't have any uh stickers where's our emissions sticker and it is nowhere to be found um our sticker that shows us the amount of freon that goes into the ac system uh there's no sticker here so that's you know kind of the first thing to look for it's like why is the sticker gone probably my guess is the hood's been replaced it's been repainted and they never 
care to put those stickers on. And uh, that's a lot of times what body shops will do. Um, so you see that missing, the first thing you should do is suspect that it's, maybe it's been wrecked. Uh, another thing is uh, look at these bolts right here. These are not factory bolts, you know, and they've definitely got marks on them. Here's the factory bolts on this side. And you can see that those have marks on them. Uh, of course, looking down here, everything looks, you know, brand new. It's got dirt on it, but it looks brand new. It doesn't look old, but that doesn't really matter that much because, um, you know, the car only has like 5,370 some miles or something like that. So um, it's a new vehicle still anyway. So everything is new. Um, so let's get this bumper off and let's um, look at the... Um, the front harness that goes to that radar. That radar sits right down inside here. It's way up inside there. So we gotta pull this, this grill and all this stuff off. And uh, we'll check it out, see what we find. Okay, um, it's not that hard to get this bumper off. Uh, as you've seen, um, it's a newer vehicle um, than the last um, uh, video I put up uh, removing and uh, replacing a bumper on a Kia Sorento. That was an old Sorento, but um, if uh, you watch that video, and if you haven't, I'll put a link right up here. You can go check it out. Um, but um, it, it's pretty much came off the same way. A little bit easier, in fact. Um, because it had this connector right here and it's got the entire wiring harness that goes up underneath here of course none of this is what we're looking for we are looking at this right here this radar unit and it looks like it's rubbing on the bumper right there um, and I don't know if this is an aftermarket unit I don't know if it's if it's set up correctly or they just slammed it in there because this has to be leveled with the vehicle and it's got to be calibrated and um, you can see this harness it's not even hooked up where it's supposed to be and that is the ambient temperature sensor it's not hooked up where it's supposed to be it's just kind of hanging there and there's a couple other connectors here so I don't really see any damage not right away but we're gonna have to get into it and check it out so let um, me get this bumper out of the way and then uh, I'll pull this down a little bit and take a closer look. Okay, so one of the first things I noticed is this uh, radar, uh, it doesn't, it looks like it's angled this way, you know, and kind of up, you know, but uh, it's just, you can't really tell by the naked eye. You need to actually level these things out before they're calibrated. But this one, you can see it move in there and right here 
It's not even hooked up. This is supposed to be popped on there. It cannot be calibrated. So that's where it goes. But like I said, it looks like it was bumped right here. I don't know if this was actually in the wreck or if this was replaced by the body shop, but this being popped off, that's definitely not supposed to be like that. You have adjustments, you know, right here and yeah. I think this this one and this one are supposed to rotate and then here's your adjustment right here. But um, if this bracket is bent, or it looks like it's bent back, but that may be the way it's supposed to be, although it doesn't look right with the other one right here. Uh, also this beam right here, looks like it's been replaced. It's got the sticker on. Brand new vehicles don't have stickers like that on it with part numbers. Um, so yeah, that's something uh, definitely gonna have to look into. Um, maybe this um, radar was replaced, wasn't calibrated properly. Uh, I'm not sure. This harness goes up in here, goes back there, and it actually splits off and goes further up in there. And it comes over to this connector right here, which then splits off, and that goes up into there. So everything is up behind this headlamp. So I'll probably take this headlamp off so that um, we can see what's going on underneath there. Uh, still looking for, for damage. Uh, there's a little bit of damage right there. So maybe this was reused. Don't know exactly how this thing was hit. I could not get any information. Um, and I don't know if this came directly from a body shop um, or if it was purchased at an auction. Um, not exactly sure. Uh, I do know because of this incident and because of this, it cannot be certified. It cannot be a certified pre-owned. It needs to be uh, like brand new. You know, that's the whole idea about certified pre-owned. When you go out and you buy a vehicle that's certified pre-owned, it's been inspected thoroughly and it is like brand new. And uh, I mean, this vehicle only has 5,000 miles. It is brand new, you know? Uh, so it's sad. Um, but let me see, I can take this headlamp off and see if we can find anything underneath there. Okay, I need to get this trim off over here and these connectors right here are these little clips these are not factory clips these are definitely aftermarket and you work on enough of these and you take these enough of these clips off you know which ones you know are supposed to be there and which ones are something new you haven't seen or are different and you know they're aftermarket so I need to get a couple of these bolts out. Disconnect this headlamp. And I found some glue over here. It looks like somebody glued the bumper to the bumper bracket. I don't see any damage on there. The, let me get this out of the way. Okay, let's see. Here's this wiring coming through here. Uh, where's the, this is the main wiring and I can't tell this has been redone or not and this is not hooked up to anything this goes up in here and it changes from this fabric type of tape to this other type of electrical tape right there that's I don't know kind of questionable not exactly sure but that that goes to the sensor up here so that's not we're not even interested in that that's no issue with that and there's a possibility that if it is a harness it's an area that they haven't really been to or did not pay any attention to so this harness comes up 
this way it splits there's a split right here that goes down that way so I'm not sure if this stuff comes in here and splits down that way I'm gonna have to look at the schematics but this goes right up into here and it splits off right there so it splits this is the headlamp connector this untangle that this splits off to there so that's we're not talking about that there's another little split that comes here that's for the horn so actually all the split is nothing for us it's it goes back down this way through this connector so it's all that wiring right there through this connector back up this way back through this way and back down that way so I believe the problem has got to be from here all the way down through all this to there possibly even that right there um, yeah that's right there is a big suspect so let me get into the wiring schematic on this and see if I can see what what's going on where to start with this uh, we're probably gonna have to do some kind of testing um, for um, the control area network we're gonna have to check voltages uh, maybe ohm out the control area network and find out uh, see if we can see where the problem might might happen or or, or be or whatever um, and it's a possibility with me just moving all this wiring and stuff around you know I may have fixed it which makes it even worse because it makes it harder to find um, oh, right here is where I saw that there's glue they put glue on here when they put that bumper on so they basically tried to glue the bumper onto this bracket so I guess this bracket ain't working right it's not holding or something I guess we'll find out for sure when we put the bumper back on if it holds it in place or not um, but uh, yeah let me look into the schematics see what kind of tests we need to do okay I looked into uh, these codes that we have right here and this is just a printout of uh, what we saw on the um, KDS and um, uh, they all have to do with uh, local CAN timeout local control area network for the front camera and uh, so this uh, one right here this is uh, the FR radar this is the front radar this is the rear corner radar uh, this is the EPS, this is uh, Electronic Power Steering, uh, CAN Timeout LKA, stands for Lane Keep Assist, and all these uh, are timeouts due to not getting information from the front camera, and the front camera is right there. Uh, so I don't know how bad this thing was wrecked. It does have a, I don't know if you can see that right there, it does have a, a Kia. Um, windshield but that doesn't mean that the windshield wasn't replaced and maybe the front camera uh, had been knocked or um, not calibrated um, but it's it's not a it's not a out of calibration uh, code it's a lack of communication code and uh, this right here is definitely an issue you know this thing being off like that Oh, I'm sorry you can't even see that but uh, yeah this thing being off right there like that so th this is definitely an issue this is definitely gonna need to be calibrated and uh, uh, we're gonna have to try and recalibrate that and uh, we could try and recalibrate the front camera but um, it's not gonna help the uh, lack of communication so uh, the camera just might be out um, and uh, it's um, late in the day so we're gonna have to start this thing up first thing in the morning First thing in the morning, it's easier to diagnose and record and film in this uh, shop. This uh, things are changing in this shop, and it's getting harder to um, for me to uh, make videos uh, in this shop. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, but uh, tomorrow uh, we'll get into it, and we will find out. Uh, we'll we'll try and uh, diagnose the um, uh, front camera. Uh, the best way to start doing that is uh, just to get into it and see if we got uh, power and ground at the camera see if we get uh, can communication check our uh, high and low 
uh, can uh, lines and see if we got voltages there and then uh, we can always uh, ohm it out too and see um, if uh, we, we can ohm out the whole system. It's the LCAN, so there's more, there are multiple control area networks in these vehicles and um, the there's a A can, C can, B can, D can. This is the L can. So uh, we'll have to uh, check that out. Um, the, this, uh, this is a turbocharged, turbocharged 2.5 liter. Um, it's not too much different than uh, the one we just, uh, I just did a diagnostic on, um, um, what was it, uh, injectors, injectors. But that one wasn't turbocharged, but it's basically the same engine. Um, if you haven't seen that one on uh, diagnosing uh, injectors and misfire issues, uh, I'll put a link right up here. You can go check that out. And uh, other than that, I will see you tomorrow. Good morning. So it's seven dark 30 and a half hours. Anyway, it's the morning. Um, let's try and get some diagnostic in before it gets uh, hot. It's already at 80 degrees, so you know, what does it matter? But uh, let me get in here and look at this camera and this thing. So the camera is up underneath this. So I need to pull this out. see if the thing is even plugged in so that came off kind of easy on this side it's like it wasn't really clipped and it clips right here I can push that out Oops. yep I didn't want to take it off that way but it's out so there's the plug right there let's see I mean, it is plugged in. So I'll take it into the wiring schematic on this and uh, see see what uh, see what we got. We should have uh, an L can and a power and a ground for sure. And we just need to make sure that we have all that. And those are very very fine micro pins right there. So get into the wiring schematic and see what we got okay this is what we're looking at uh, when it comes to this connector for the uh, front camera so we have a uh, we got two uh, controller networks and we got the L can so local can like local can high local can low uh, we got the E can E can low E can high so there we have uh, three three and nine as your local can so you got three and nine right next to each other and then uh, four and ten as the e can and of course four and ten are right next to each other so we need to check these out um, this uh, schematic shows the e can so we're looking at the front camera right here and where it goes to the e can which basically goes to um, everything else and here's your front radar unit right here but at first what we're going to be looking at mainly is this local can this l can which only goes between the front uh, view camera and the front radar unit so this is what we want to check out um, here's the front camera we got uh, power coming in right here um, we also have um, a departure warning sw system switch, you know, so it's switching, you know, um, the, for the system, you know, is it working or not? Um, it depends depending on you know, what it can see, depends on if it's going to work or not. And then we have ground, and of course, we got the E can right here. So we'll get to that if we need to, but the first thing we want to check is this L can. Do we have uh, high and low voltage? Probably the, the easiest way to check it out is to check your low and high voltage on the L can, low and high voltage on the E can. If those are all good, then uh, we need to check the input, make sure we're getting power, and make sure we're getting good ground. If all that turns out right, it could be a bad camera. But we need to check the other components 
to see because uh, one component can bring another component down. So let's start here. Okay, so what we're gonna check out first is this uh, local can, uh, pin number nine and number three right here three and nine and uh so look at this this is uh kind of a cool thing that uh that kia has so if i look at this number right here it says uh, 020 and i look at the back of this uh, 020 right there it shows bw it's black with white so if i find the black with white wire that one's not in it's this one right here black with white that pin that is a micro pin right there it's very small and it's meant to go into these so we can plug this directly into there we don't have to worry about messing up pin tensions or anything like that and uh, we don't have to worry about uh, messing up the back of the connector by uh, sticking a probe and back probing it so that's pretty cool I'm gonna get this off of here so we can uh, plug in our tester in the back of this when we have this plugged in so let's get up in there and see what we can find okay here's where we are with this um, so I got the got this cable hooked to ground down there it's on the um, brake bracket with that's grounded and then I got this one right here and you should use red for common and black for power that way it just makes it more confusing and um, I got me my meter set to volts and where I'm at right here this brown wire right there is uh, number seven so number seven is the goes to the junction box fuse so we're just getting a baseline right now and what we're doing is just checking to see what our voltage on turn the key on and I'm just gonna touch this to that just like that and I got 11.8384 uh, so battery is just a little bit low so now what I'm gonna do and uh, I'll show you this uh, we want to go to the uh, local can uh, 3 and the local can uh, pin 9 there's 3 and 9 now you look at this uh, 3 that W that means it's a white wire and this uh, P should be pink wire and if I look at the back of this I don't see any white wires there's a tan wire there's a bunch of browns a black so um, that one might be pink so um, we can't really go by wire color but this is uh, number seven is um, was the brown wire with the fuse so that we definitely you know are good there if we go uh two pins over that's a nine one pin up that's three so three and nine are what we want to check so just to go two pins over that looks like that could be pink you know so pink would be number nine so if i can move this two pins over should be right there can plug this in without messing it up okay and then we'll check our voltage here and we got 3.32 volts that's pin 9 that's the high right okay so 3.32 got to remember that then we go one pin up should be number three one pin up get that in there without messing it up okay and then we'll check this just hold that on there 1.6 so that's three four four six seven and so that's about right 1.6 on the can low 3.3 or whatever it was on the can high um that's that's about right so we're getting the voltages that we need to get um the next thing i want to do is uh check the ground and uh the best way to check a ground is to ohm it out and whenever you ohm out anything uh that goes to the chassis especially if it's not completely isolated which it's not because it's going to the chassis um you need to um disconnect the uh, battery 
you know, at least disconnect the, um, the negative cable. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, uh, other systems, even with the key off, can be using uh, power, you know, and so it, it has some uh, voltages flowing through and flowing through the system and stuff. And that can throw your uh, reading off, you know, whenever you're homing out uh, something. So always isolate everything. In this case, since we're going to a ground and we're checking, uh, um, um, we're going to be checking the, um, uh, it's, I think it's this one right here, this black one. And uh, it's pin number 11. And uh, we're going to be going from here to ground. So we're going to be checking this and make sure that it's got a good ground. So let me disconnect the battery and then uh, we'll ohm that out and see what we got. All right, I got the battery disconnected and I have this thing set to ohms. Um, and um, he's my thing right here, and this thing, and that thing, and the other thing, and I got that black wire right there. That black wire is number 11, it's ground, you know, number 11. So I have it plugged in right here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect that, hold that, and we got 0.2 ohms, right? So uh, it's less than one ohm. That's a really good connection. So we got a good ground. We got good power. Well, we got battery power, 11.99 volts, whatever it was. And uh, we got uh, uh, LCAN high, LCAN low. Um, what else? What else can we check? We can check the ECAN, but um, mainly uh, what we are looking for is the connection between the camera and the front radar so what we should probably do next is go and uh, check all the same stuff on the front radar module up there and see if we got everything there and then try and uh, make some kind of a um, a educated education edu 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 education some kind of decision you know on uh, what's what we're gonna do and so let's go check it out all right this is the connector for the front radar unit right and we have the e can over here four and five four and five and we got the l can two and three and uh, junction box so there's the uh, the fuse number six is power number one is ground uh, pretty straightforward. We just got uh, two control area networks, power and ground, and that's uh, pretty much it for this whole thing. Uh, look at this right here, uh, 025. So uh, we go to this little thing right here. Look at 025 is the red wire. Red wire. And so that is the connector we're going to be using. It's a little bit bigger than this one right here this is a micro pin this one's a little bit bigger so we're going to be using this one that way we can go straight into these connectors without um you know opening the pin, pin tensions uh, so a cool little tool it really is uh, so let's uh get on that and let's check it out all right this is the connector and i'll probably a little bit harder to see because it's got that black strip in there uh, let me take this outside piece off so we can look at those wires and wire colors in there so uh, yeah let me do that all right so what we're looking at here the back of this we got a black wire pink wire two white wires a brown wire and a white with a black stripe all right we got two white wires so the ground is black. We got a pink wire, a white wire, white wire, brown, and a white with black. Uh, so the low can, local can, the L can low is white, and the E can high is white, right next to each other. So you can see number three and four, and we know that um, number one is ground, it's black. You look at the black one. So we know that we're looking at this connector it's like opposite of what masa does so we're actually looking at the front of the connector rather than the back so 
that's cool what we're gonna do is uh, check the uh, our baseline so we're going into the white with black white with black is the junction box and uh, I got my meter set right here and I got it grounded right here that's should be a good ground and I already have the key on so let's go right here 11.79 volts our battery's starting to get a little bit lower you know from keeping the key on and stuff the vehicle's probably been sitting around a while so that's good um, let's check our local can um, so let's go to number two which is one over and that's the look the L can high let's see if I can plug this in this is this bigger one is pretty tough to get in it's hard to see with that black connector uh, I can even see it let me get this hooked up and I'll bring you back all right I got that stuck in there let's check this out okay so our high um, can is uh, 2.3 okay, 2.3 volts uh, for the L can high so we gotta remember that and then we'll go to the one right next to it so let's see hang on a second let me just move this over okay um, yeah it's the next one over the white wire <laughs> it's our low can we'll plug that in 2.6 so we had 2.3 uh, 2.6 hmm okay we got 2.6 on the low can make sure that I actually plug that into the right one okay it's so the white one it's the L can low that's 2.6 that doesn't seem right sorry about that okay uh, let me go back Let's see if I can plug this into or am I plugging it back into the same one okay 2.3 so we're looking at this pin number two is a says it's a high can and pin number three says it's a low can but we're getting a uh, 2.6 on the low can and 2.3 on the high can that that doesn't seem right I'm gonna have to get into the books and, and see what's going on with this because um, it should be the opposite uh, so uh, basically both of them together should equal about 5 volts which is, they are or 2.6 2.3 you know that's uh, you know 4.9 about 5 volts we know that our battery is a little bit low um, but we should have the 2.6 on the high can and the 2.3 on the low can we got opposite that um, unless this wiring schematic is wrong which you know Kia has done that many times uh, but uh, let's uh, go ahead and check the E can let's see what that says okay so the uh, E can uh, pin number four is high and pin number five is low so we get in here that's two no, you can't see that okay that's two three four four five six yeah so this should be four right here okay so <clears throat> still got the key on let's see what we got here okay we got a negative 0.263 that don't seem right either um, let's go to the next one that's supposed to be the ECAN high let's go to the ECAN low which would be number five that's pin four That should be pin five. Let's hook this up. We got the same thing. 
negative 2.4 have to look into that um, and then of course the last one right here this is the ground and we need to ohm that out and in order for me to do that I need to turn the key off and um, check the um, you know disconnect the battery so let's do that and maybe my ground here is not not good enough uh, well we'll find out we'll check the ground right now all right I have this plugged into the last one it's just the black one which is ground I got the thing set to ohms and I got the battery disconnected so I'll hook this touch that in there and we got 0.2 point two ohms so that's good this thing is fogging up on me oh nice my lights on so um yeah uh i need to check into those readings those readings are not right um so um maybe this thing was rewired maybe it uh, had a wiring harness uh repair done or maybe i'm just looking at it wrong uh that's always a possibility um so i always gotta kind of double check your work just to make sure especially when something looks weird just double triple quadruple check it you know and make sure am i looking at this right you know and i mean uh and then of course the uh swine schematic could be wrong um which that that is sad but it happens it, it seems to happen a lot with kia anyway um but uh so uh, let me do some research on this and uh, try and figure out what we're gonna do. Okay, let's uh, get all this out of the way. So I decided to go to the flowchart, you know, rather than doing all this crazy stuff that uh, seemed like it would work, but uh, getting some false reading. So here's the flowchart for Kia. These what this is what Kia flowcharts look like, um, basically. Uh, Check the fuse, relays, terminals. We've done enough testing. We know that all this stuff is good already, you know, and they throw um, a wiring schematic in there. Here's uh, just a basic wiring schematic. So this is what the flow charts look like for Kia. Um, so one of the first things they want us to do is with ignition on, I'm gonna go to the front radar connectors, pins two and three, that's the uh, low can and uh, then we want to probe to chassis ground and the specifications is figure one figure one is on the next page and this is an oscilloscope reading right so they're not telling us what terminal to hook the oscilloscope up to they just uh, one of them is on to terminal two of the front radar other ones on terminal three for the um for the elcan elcan high elcan low uh, I can only guess that this top one right here is on the Elcan High. We got a minimum of 2.47 volts and a minimum on this uh, for uh, 1.51. Um, uh, we got an average of 3.1 on the high can. I'm guessing that's high can. An average of 1.87 on the low can and a maximum of 3.48. Uh, and a, minim a maximum of 2.5. So the maximum of of the low can from what i can guess is 2.5 where the minimum of high can is 2.47 so uh, that's one thing to look at so uh, we need to get the oscilloscope out so uh, let me get the vmi hooked up and all that stuff and uh, let's um, hook up the oscilloscope and see what happens all right i got the vmi hooked up here and this is an interface for the KDS system. And it's got this cable right here running down. And we are going into the LCAN high and LCAN low right here. And we have it hooked up exactly the way that I figured they want us to hook it up, you know, in that, in that flow chart. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into measurement. And we only need two channels, but this system actually works better with four channels and I'm gonna go into the first two channels where it says knock sensor right here I'm gonna scroll down to where I find uh, control area network right there 
So this is pretty cool. They're already programmed in. I don't have to worry about, you know, what, what I'm looking for. Um, so there, the first uh, two right there, I'm gonna hit apply. So hopefully that worked. Okay, so these top two, this is what we're looking for. We got everything hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and turn the uh, key on. So I get in here and turn on the key, hit that twice. And let's see what we got. Okay, and that looks kind of like what they're talking about. We got a average of 3.3 volts on the high and an average of 1.7 on the low. So that will equal out to about five volts. So that's what it's supposed to be. A uh, maximum of four volts, a maximum of 2.8. So we're just looking for the average so 1.7 on the low, 3.3, 3.4 on the high. So um, according to that and according to this flow chart, uh, let me see if I can find the thing again. Now, well, the description, I don't know what happened to it. Anyway, the, um, the figure that they showed, that's right on. So we ohmed out that L can and it just seemed kind of weird or whatever, but uh, going with the oscilloscope and with the thing plugged in and that may have been something weird going on because it wasn't plugged in. So now we're back probing um, and it shows that it's good. So we can move on to the next thing. And the next thing is to uh, go to the front radar connector, pin two and three and ohm that out to the front camera connectors pin nine and three so basically they want us to um, check for um, continuity between this um, radar down here and the uh, camera they want us to check the continuity in the in the l can make sure that uh, they're actually connected you know so they can talk to each other so i'll set that up i'm gonna have to double lead my um, ohm meter just to find out and uh, we'll see we'll see what they're at all right I have um, the ohm meter set up right here I got the wire going in through the driver's door and let's come around here I got it coming in there and I got it hooked to the uh, I think it's pin 9 pin 9 Pin nine is the local can high. Yeah, pink wire and it's hooked in right there. And then I have the battery disconnected and I got this in pin two, which is the pink wire right there. Pin two, so we're gonna check um, continuity. I take these and hook them up. Sorry about that. I got them hooked up and we're looking at 0 0.5, 0.5 ohms. So 0.5 ohms is good. Um, also, um, they want me to check the uh, power to ground or short to ground. So I'm just grounding this out on here and I'm getting nothing. So that means that we don't have a short to ground. So now let's move on to the can low. So let me set this up and we'll check that one. All right, I got the wire hooked up um, on the camera side over there uh, to pin three, which is low can, and also pin three here, it's a white wire. And I'm going to touch this together like that. 0.5 ohms, I take it off. And then I'm going to check at the ground and no no short to ground so um, I don't have any short to ground in the uh, L can we have uh, good continuity between the radar front radar and the camera um, on both circuits so let's go to the next step and let's see what we need to do okay so now the last step this is the next step is the last step our last two steps and if you don't remember from uh, looking at the flowchart, uh, we are going to actually check the component. 
All right, so the radar here and the camera up there, we've already tested, you know, the um, um, continuity in between both and, and uh, to see if we were actually getting any uh, anything on, um, you know, um, the, the oscilloscope and stuff like that. So uh, everything so far is good. Uh, so what they want us to do is check the can uh, low and can high for the L can on the actual component and we're going to check resistance on the component itself and so uh, I believe the flow chart said 120 ohms resistance is what we should get and um, if we get 120 ohms then it's good and then we'll move on to the next step uh, but we're gonna go ahead and check this radar first and then I'll get the vehicle down and then we'll go back we'll go into the vehicle and we'll um, check the camera and see what that's at. Um, so uh, this is gonna be kind of tough. I'm gonna try and set this up so that you can see me probing this thing right here and uh, you know the, uh, what the rating is or uh, what kind of resistance we're getting. So let me set that up. Okay, so I am looking for pins two and three right here and I'm gonna put them together to see what we get. So just testing the leads. Okay, so hopefully you can see it. Uh, I'm gonna try and touch just pins two and three. Uh, hopefully you can see that I got 122.1 ohms. So 120 ohms is what we're looking for. So that is actually close enough. So <clears throat> that's close enough. It's 122.1, 120 ohms. Um, it's kind of hot in here, uh, definitely hot. Um, so that brings resistance up, so that's all right. Um, so now let me let the vehicle down and we're gonna do the same thing for the camera on the inside and see what we get there. All right, in the vehicle now, we are going to check, and these pins are a lot smaller. So it's actually three pins from this side, three pins in, the bottom and the top. So you count one, two, three, that pin, and one, two, three, that pin. Um, so I'm gonna be checking. This is gonna be impossible for me to show me checking this and this voltmeter or uh, ohmmeter at the same time. So <clears throat> I'm going to set you up here. You can look at the voltmeter. I'll check the volt, I'll, I'll check the pins right here, and then you tell me what it's at, what uh, resistance it is, okay? Let's do it. Okay, I am attempting to touch these leads only to the high and low can on this camera. Uh, I think it's about right there. Where are we? What do we got? What do you see? Uh, we're looking for 120 ohms. What is it? What do we got? Okay. Okay, looks like it was uh, somewhere around 2.5 kilo ohms. Um, that's not 120 ohms. Um, no, <laughs> that's not even close. That's no bueno. It, it's not gonna, that's not gonna work. It, it, there, there's something wrong with the camera. Um, so uh, I'll go uh, check the next step and see what we need to do. See if it says, hey, replace the camera or, or what. Um, we know that that, that uh, radar down there that needs to be uh, recalibrated just by the way the thing was sitting is moving it wasn't on its perch properly so it needs to be adjusted needs to be calibrated and this is uh, has too much um, uh, 100 what was it 2.5 thousand ohms yeah so uh, that's not right uh, so let's check it out and see what we need to do next okay um, basically it says repair as necessary uh, then go to verification of repair. It's like, is it good or is it no good? No, it's no good. It's a, then it says check for open or short in the harness. Uh, we already did that. That was the first part that they told us to do. Why are they telling us to do that again? So we already know it's good. Um, then it says repair as necessary, then go to verification of repair. So. Um, they're leaving it up to us, repair as necessary. Well, I think it's necessary to replace that camera. Um, and then I think it's necessary to, to uh, get this thing right here straightened out and do the calibration on it. 
and this all has to be sold. Um, none of this is covered under warranty because the vehicle was wrecked. Um, let me just look at all my paperwork here. And yeah, that's that was the last part. So, um, when in doubt, uh, go to the flow chart. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I tried to skip over that and, and sometimes it works really good. And sometimes uh, it doesn't, you get confused. It's like, what's going on? That oscilloscope saved us this time. Um, sometimes it's more trouble than it's worth and sometimes it saves you and it saved us this time. So let me uh, get a price on that camera for them and see what they want to do. It's a brand new car and you know they're going to replace it. And you know they are. So. Uh, I will get back to you. Uh, I, I doubt we have something like that in stock. So whenever we do get it all in or ready to do calibrations and all that stuff, I will let you know. Okay. Um, I did not expect this at all. Um, so uh, after all the diags that we've done, uh, oscilloscope and checking all this stuff out, and you've seen how we diagnose this, seeing how my diagnostic really uh, sent us for a little loop. We got into the uh, flow chart and diagnosed it correctly, found what the issue was. They declined it. So uh, yeah, they brought it in as a CPO, certified pre-owned, and um, that wasn't gonna be a certified pre-owned because we found out that it was wrecked on the front. Uh, tried to fix it. We could sell it as a used car. It's a brand new car, 5,000 miles. They declined the repair. I guess they're not going to make enough money since they can't sell it as a CPO. I have no idea. I think it's probably going to go to auction. Did not expect this at all. So there's no happy ending with this thing. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry about that, but uh, at least we got through the diagnostics and we know what the issue was. Um, so uh, Thanks for watching, you know, if you're still watching. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you haven't, then what are you waiting for? Just, you know, hit the button, subscribe. You know, it it's, doesn't cost much, you know, it's free, you know. Uh, so I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next one.